The Song of Moses is a very important piece of the puzzle in understanding Bible prophecy. God gives emphasis to the Song of Moses at Revelation 15 and verse 2 and 3. There he says, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God, and here's the emphasis, and they sing the Song of Moses. Now the Song of Moses is recorded at Deuteronomy chapter 32. It concludes the blessings and the curses and concludes the Torah. And so if we had lived during the time of Moses, it would have been the end of our Bible, kind of like Revelation is the end of our Bible today. The Song of Moses very well could be one of the most powerful places where God has been telling us about the end from the very beginning. The Song of Moses appears to combine the language of seals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 with trumpet 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7 and bulls 2, 3, 6, and 7. And so let's get started in verse 22. There it says, For a fire is kindled in his anger and shall burn to the lowest hell. It shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of mountains. Now it's very interesting that Jesus shared the same language in Luke 12 verse 49, 2,000 years ago, where he said that he didn't come to bring peace to the earth. He says, I have come to bring fire to the earth, and how I wished it were already kindled. And so 2,000 years ago, the fire wasn't already kindled, but Jesus was just wishing it were kindled. Now it's very interesting that in the vision before the seven trumpets, the angel takes fire from the altar and hurls it to the earth. And so could it be that when we see this language in the Song of Moses that this fire is kindled in his anger, could it be that this is the beginning vision of the seven trumpets? And could it be that this is the time that Jesus' wish comes true? Now once this fire is kindled in his anger, it says that it shall consume the earth with her increase. Is it possible that this is the same thing as trumpet number one, where hail and fire mingled with blood is hurled to the earth? And what does it do? It burns up a third of the earth, it burns up a third of the trees, and it burns up all the green grass. So is it possible that the Song of Moses here is incorporating the same language as trumpet number one? Now after it consumes the earth with their increase, it says it will set fire on the foundations of mountains. Is it possible that this is that incorporating trumpet number two, where it says something like a great mountain burning with fire is hurled into the sea and what happens? A third of the sea turns to blood, a third of the sea creatures die, and a third of the ships are destroyed. Continuing on in verse 23, he says, He will heap disasters on them. He will spend his arrows on them. They shall be wasted with hunger, devoured by pestilence and bitter destruction. He will also send against them the teeth of the beasts with the poison serpents of the dust. The sword shall destroy outside. There shall be terror within for the young man and virgin, the nursing child, with the man of gray hairs. Here the Song of Moses mentions sword, hunger, pestilence, teeth of the beasts. This is the same language we see in Revelation in Seal 2, 3, and 4. In Seal 2, we see a rider on the red horse given a big sword taken peace away from the earth. In Seal 3, we see a black horse given a pair of scales measuring out food for money, famine, hunger. In Seal 4, we see a combination of sword, famine, wild beast, and pestilence. And this is how death in Hades is killing a fourth part of the earth. That's a lot of people, by the way. It's very interesting that when we go to Ezekiel 14, verse 21, God refers to the sword, famine, wild beast, and pestilence as his four disastrous acts of judgment. Now in verse 23, he says that he will spend his arrows on them. Now this is really interesting because when we go to seal number one, that's what the rider on the white horse is missing. He's riding to conquer and complete his conquest. He's given a, a bow and a crown, but where are his arrows?
And so is it possible that the Song of Moses is revealing to us what his arrows are? Could it be that the rider on the white horse is shooting seal two, the sword, shooting seal three, hunger, shooting seal four, pestilence, and the beasts of the earth in combination with sword and famine? Is it possible that the reason the rider on the white horse has no arrows is because he's shooting God's four disastrous acts of judgment, sword, famine, wild beast, and pestilence? Now in verse 25, he says that he'll also send against them the teeth of the beasts with the poison serpents of the dust. Now we see poison serpents of the dust appear in trumpet number five where scorpions are stinging. And we also see poison serpents of the dust in trumpet six where serpents or snakes are inflicting wounds. Now back to trumpet five in Revelation nine, the Bible says that the locusts are released from the abyss and given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were to torment the men who didn't have the seal for five months, and it says that their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man, poison serpent of the dust. The stings were so bad, the Bible says, in those days men shall seek death, and they shall not find it. They shall desire to die, but death shall flee from them. And in trumpet number six, also in Revelation chapter nine, we see an army of 200 million released to kill a third. And the Bible says, for the power is in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails were like serpents, poison serpents of the dust, and had heads, and with them do wound. And so it's very interesting that when the Song of Moses refers to the poison serpents of the dust, that we see scorpions stinging in trumpet number five, and in trumpet number six, we see serpents or snakes inflicting wounds. Now Christians have been struggling with which comes first, the seals or the trumpets? And how do we stagger the seals with the trumpets? Could it be that the Song of Moses is revealing to us that trumpets number one and two will sound before the rider on the white horse starts shooting his arrows of seal two, three, and four, God's four disastrous acts of judgment, sword, famine, pestilence, and wild beast. And finally, in verse 25, God seems to indicate the feelings of those who will be living on the earth at this time. He says, there shall be terror within for the young man and virgin, the nursing child, with the man of gray hairs. So God describes the feeling of humans at this time as terror. Continuing on with the Song of Moses in verse 41, he says, If I wet my glittering sword and my hand takes hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and captives from the heads of the leaders of the enemy. Verse 43 says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and render vengeance to his adversaries. He will provide atonement for his land and his people. So where could we possibly find this same language in the Bible? This language of sword and judgment, his sword devouring flesh with the blood of the slain, with the heads of the leaders of the enemies. Where could we possibly find this similar language in the Bible? You guessed it, Revelation Bowl 6 at Armageddon. And there in Revelation chapter 19, where we get this description of Armageddon, uh, starting with verse 11, it says, And there before me was a white horse. Here's this language of the Song of Moses. With justice he judges and makes war. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, clean and white. And here again, we're picking up the same language in the Song of Moses. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. Or as the Song of Moses said, his sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and specifically with the heads of the leaders of his enemies. Continuing on in verse 17, he says, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, who cried with a loud voice to all the birds flying in mid-air, Come, gather for the great supper of God, 
that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty men, of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, small and great. So this is the same language we see in the Song of Moses way back in Deuteronomy in verse 42. He says, And my sword shall devour flesh with the blood of the slain and captives, and here we go, from the heads of the leaders of the enemies. And so in Bowl 6 and Armageddon, boy, do we see just the biggest fulfillment of the Song of Moses, where God truly has been telling us the very end from the very beginning. Now in the Song of Moses at verse 43, it says that he will avenge the blood of his servants. Well, we see this same language of avenging the blood of his servants in Revelation chapter 6 in seal number 5, where there we have the slain martyrs under the altar, and they're asking God, how long, sovereign Lord, until you judge and avenge our blood? And so it's really beautiful. In the bowls of wrath, we actually get a part answer to their question. In bowl two, the angel pours the bowl out on the sea, and every living creature in the sea dies. In bowl number three, the angel pours it out on the springs and the rivers, and they also turn to blood. And then in Revelation chapter 16 and verse 3 through 7, the angel says, You are just in these judgments, because you have so judged. And here's the reason, for they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and look what God does, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And check this out. And I heard the altar, yes, the altar in seal five, where the martyrs are under the altar crying out. And I heard the altar respond, yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. So in bowls number two and three, we get a very clear answer to when God judges the martyr's blood. And in bowl number seven, we also get another clear answer when God avenges their blood. In bowl number seven in Revelation 16 and verse 19, God says, And God remembered Babylon the great, and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Now, if you go and learn about this uh, judgment on the prostitute at Revelation 19.2, there he says, and here we get the answer, the second answer to the martyr's question on when are you going to avenge our blood? And there at 19.2 he says, For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries, and here we go, and has avenged the blood of his servants. So in bowl number two and three, we get a clear answer to when God judges their blood. And in bowl number seven, when God condemns the great prostitute, it says so clearly, he has avenged the blood of his servants. How beautiful. And the final thing we're gonna look at is the last line of verse 43, where he says, he will provide atonement for his land and his people. Well, we see this strong language in Numbers 35, 33, where it says that blood defiles the land and no atonement can be made for the land, for the bloodshed that is on it, except by the blood of him who shed it. And so the land is filled with blood and God is going to make atonement for the land by the ones who spilled the blood. When we look at Isaiah 26, 21, we see that God actually comes out of his temple to disclose this blood. And there it says, for behold, the Lord comes out of his place, wow, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their inequity. And look what it says. The earth will also disclose her blood and no more cover her slain. So what a beautiful thing. When God says he's going to make atonement for his land and his people, he's not kidding. He's actually going to come out of his temple, disclose the blood, and he's going to shed the blood of those who have been defiling the land with blood. Brothers and sisters, the Song of Moses is so important. This is the place where God has been telling us the end from the beginning. Might you be amongst those who are victorious over the beast, the image, and the mark, and might you be amongst those that's joining in this heavenly course